From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Labanca, and welcome to the season one finale of Studio Bergen. Can you believe it? We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get right into it with the biggest story of the year, Commencement 2012. The largest class in the college's history, 2,153 candidates, officially turned their tassels at commencement, which took place May 17th at the Izod Center in East Rutherford. Family and friends packed the arena while the college streamed the event live on the internet and blogged on the Bergen Facebook page. The college's interim president, Dr. Jose Adamas, presided over his first commencement as Bergen's top administrator. Your diploma signifies a foundation strengthened by a caring, nurturing, and dedicated faculty. Today you graduate from a nationally respected institution. Bergen Community College earned that reputation through teaching excellence and with innovative programs that address the diverse needs of Bergen students. This year's keynote speaker, Bergen County Executive Kathleen Donovan, encouraged the graduates to look within themselves and become leaders. We need great leaders for the future. Leaders who are not afraid to stand up and defend their beliefs. Leaders who can mobilize their community around an idea and devise a plan of action to make an impact. Leaders who do not shirk away from tough challenges, but face them head on and approach them with the full power of their resources. You must ask yourself, how will you lead in your profession? How will you lead amongst your family and friends and community? What can you bring to the table to help uplift the people around you? Everyone here has something to add to the conversation and has to be ready to speak up when called upon. For valedictorian Carolina Espen, the day had double meaning. May 17th marked the 10-year anniversary of her mother's decision to move the family to the U.S. Carolina graduated with a 4.0 GPA. The school welcomed me with open arms and offered me a home. It was a place where I felt safe, encouraged, and motivated to try and learn new things. I wasn't judged or ostracized for wanting to do something different or even something I wasn't used to doing. On the contrary, I was encouraged and motivated to learn and try new things. A leadership position to help others organize programs, meet different people, reach out to others, and ask for help. Professors, faculty, and staff became our role models and mentors. The class of 2012 included 48 students with 4.0 GPAs, 51 members of Phi Theta Kappa, and 42 members of the Judith K. Wynn School of Honors. Commencement 2012 also included a marriage proposal on the day of. Congrats to the happy couple. A few weeks before the class of 2012 walked down the aisle to receive their degrees, they took part in the college's first ever graduation salute, an event designed to give Bergen students a convenient opportunity to socialize with each other and settle all items related to their time at Bergen. In addition to receiving their caps and gowns, students met with representatives from various offices, including financial aid, the bursar, and the Bergen Community College Foundation all with the aim of providing a one-stop shop, according to Interim Assistant Dean of the Center for Student Success, Jennifer Reyes. First time ever. Um, just, you know, just a real push to um, let students know how much we care about them, um, let them know that we're always here for them, pull everybody together. Usually they would just go to different departments and kind of scattered all around, so we thought, let's just make a party of it. We have um, food, we have music, we have all the departments, which is fun, and um, photos with their friends, just a day of fun. At the salute, students also met with four-year college reps and had a chance to win one of three iPad giveaways. Leading up to commencement, the college's highest achieving students were recognized at the annual Academic Awards Ceremony which took place May 15th in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater. The top student from each academic discipline was recognized, as were students who received special awards from Phi Theta Kappa, the Judith K. Wynn School of Honors, and the Bergen Community College Foundation. 
Academic Vice President Dr. Bonnie McDougall said the event is an appropriate first act leading up to the main event of commencement. It is, and, and I bet you for some people this is a more important night, really, because this is about their achievement, and um, although I'm sure they'll have a good, good deal of fun at graduation, but uh, it, it's special if you're chosen by your professors uh, to, to receive an award. Similarly, at the Bergen Community College Foundation's 12th Annual Scholarship Award Ceremony, May 3rd, 201 students received more than $300,000 in scholarships made possible by members of the community and Bergen personnel, such as Professor Art Tolvey, who donates annually to the foundation. It's important for the students. Um, some of the students can't afford to come. Uh, some have interim problems with money. Uh, and besides, it gives the students a, a sense that this, we, the faculty, care about them. At the event, students met with donors and discussed their plans for the future. To date, the foundation has awarded more than $19 million in scholarships to Bergen students. Those students will be putting their scholarships to use in September when the fall 2012 semester opens. With that in mind, all new, current, and former Bergen students can now register for the fall semester, either in A129 in the Pitkin Education Center at the main campus in Paramus, or go.bergen.edu. Numerous summer sessions are still open too, so students looking to catch up or get ahead still have time to accomplish that this summer as well. Some of Bergen's top students gathered on May 3rd for the official opening of the Judith K. Wynn School of Honors, which was renamed in honor of Bergen's fourth president last year. The event, which took place in the West Hall Recital Hall, featured remarks by members of the honors faculty and Dr. Wynn herself, who was humbled by the honor and said the honors program prepares students for the road ahead. It's just an absolutely wonderful thing to be able to have your students so well prepared that they can go into absolutely any environment, uh, to Rutgers, to state colleges, to Ivy League schools, and be able to succeed and go beyond what other students who had been there from freshman year were able to do. Dr. Wynn served the college as president from 1995 to 2007. For a few chosen professors, they are bestowed the rank of Professor Emeritus, joining a select group of instructors who have made a lasting impact at the institution. In this month's Faculty Focus, we look at the careers of this year's honorees, Dr. David Kevitt, Jane Meehan, and Gerald Mizell. In the illustrious 45 years Bergen Community College has been in existence, only 37 professors have earned the rank of Professor Emeritus. On May 11th, three more joined the exclusive club. I sometimes say, in other settings, there is no more recognition that you can receive than recognition from your students and a recognition from your colleagues. And to be named Professor Emeriti is indeed a significant recognition, an extraordinary accomplishment, and you join the ranks, as you see in this program, of a limited number of individuals that fall within that category. During the ceremony, friends and colleagues each reflected on the careers of the inductees. First up was Dr. Joanne Glasgow on English and Philosophy Professor Dr. David Kevitt. David and I shared an office for I can't tell you how many years, and it would be embarrass me to tell you how many years. <laughs> but I think I got to see the professor that he was in a way that you can't when you just pass in the hallways, you're going to your class and he's going to his class. Uh, if you happen to walk by his class, you might have probably seen him uh, sitting lotus position on his desk. Oh yeah, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> and everyone would be, abs all his students would be absolutely glued to what he was saying. And then they'd be laughing because he was very funny as well. But I got to see the other part of it when he was seeing students in the office. And for me, that was a real key to who David was. According to Dr. Glasgow, Dr. Kevitt was always learning, excited to uncover new things. 
all of a sudden, he'd yell out, listen to this, and then he would, he would start going with what it was. And we wound up, we wound up being able to write together, which I, you know, writing to me has always seemed to be a personal thing, but David and I could actually write together. It was a fascinating thing to watch. And I think that that, that aspect of David, uh, his deep religiosity, but also in, in devoutness, but also his, his very deep interest in all of the things that he read and saw made him the kind of teacher that he was. Legal studies professor Larry Joel, who, like Dr. Glasgow and Dr. Cabot, shared an office with one of this year's honorees, the late Gerald Mizell. I had the opportunity and the privilege to share an office with him for the last 15 years. So he would sit with his desk right across from me. He'd share stories with me. He'd share stories with me as a professional, as an academic, as a father, as a husband. He was a very interesting and interesting and colorful person. It was really his vision that expanded the programs at the school and, and really leads Bergen to be one of the, um, uh, the best community colleges in this country today. Jerry was a mentor to me. He treated me as a colleague, as a peer, as a mentor, as a son. He was very, very kind to me. Joel said Professor Mizell was a consummate professional. He was a special person. Um, I, you know, in, in, in thinking and, you know, thoughts were going through my mind uh, the past few days about him, and I, I wrote a few notes, and I'm not going to give an ad hoc. Uh, um, he said, always be prepared. Uh, do your best. Be diligent. Uh, Gary said um, he was honest. He had integrity, and that was Jerry. Uh, most important to Jerry was his family, his wife Linda, Melissa is here as well, his daughters Marnie and Lori also were really the, the gems in his life. But he was a very, very serious and dedicated professional. The third inductee, nursing professor Jane Meehan, was compelled by her profession and her students, according to fellow professor Joanne DiMeditis. There are countless student stories but Jane's love inspired many students to succeed and become professional RNs. Faculty also said many great things about Jane. One wrote, she possesses a blend of genuine care and concern that touches the mind, heart, and soul of others and students. For Professor Meehan, Dr. Gary Porter said she was always a student favorite. I asked this question a lot. I said, Who's your favorite professor? And I always knew I was talking to a nursing student when they said, oh, oh Professor Mann, there's Professor Mann. They, it was always, the, there, was always, there was a number two, and there was a number three, and there was a number four, but the top of the list, whenever I asked a student and I found out, there was, it was always Janie. They always loved Janie. Dr. Porter, a former academic vice president, concluded by reflecting on the entire group. We have three professors, not all of them with us, not all of, from the same department or discipline. Their contributions are many and long and noteworthy. Their students will never forget them. And it is appropriate indeed that we never forget them and they join the ranks of our other emeritus professors. With the end of the semester also comes a number of ceremonial pinning celebrations for members of programs within the college's School of Health Professions. Members of the nursing program took their turn May 14th in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater, followed by the dental hygiene program May 16th and the respiratory therapy program May 22nd. The graduates of the dental hygiene program also took part in the annual graduates tea ceremony earlier in the month. Elsewhere in May, Bergen student artists had a chance to display their work in Gallery Bergen as part of the annual exhibit open to all students. The exhibition featured work in a variety of mediums, including paint and photographs. Gallery Bergen is located on the third floor of West Hall at Bergen's main campus in Paramus. Coming up after a short break, 
we'll start tying a bow on the 2011-12 school year and the first year of this show. We'll also have the newly elected president and vice president of the Student Government Association in studio. We'll be right back. Salam. Jam. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships to promote peace around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Levanka. In news from last month's Board of Trustees meeting, after months of demonstrations led by student leaders urging the college's board to grant voting rights to the panel's alumni trustee, the board passed a resolution at its May meeting granting voting rights to the current alumni trustee, whose term ends this month, and the new alumni trustee, who begins a one-year term in July. Student leaders applauded the decision. In other news, 68 students spoke up at the fifth annual speech competition that awarded $2,000 in prizes from the Bergen Community College Foundation to the top seven finishers. The contemporary issues theme permitted the students to address a wide swath of topics in their six-minute informative or persuasive speech. Professor Jane Phelps, who organizes the competition, said participation grew by 20% from last year. I think more students understand that they have projects in other classes that they could adapt to a speech because the theme is contemporary issues. What doesn't work under contemporary issues? And I think there's more awareness throughout the college too of faculty and also students. They see the poster. And let me just add that the foundation is sponsoring $2,000 in cash prizes. And I think students look at that and understand, uh, you know, they've done the work, they have the content, they just have to modify it to a speech. So I think it's a combination. With its service learning program growing each year, the college took time out May 2nd to recognize the faculty members who have integrated the concept into their coursework. Currently, nearly 100 faculty members require service learning projects in their classroom. Program coordinator Christine Matthews said it fosters civic responsibility and empowers students to become leaders. Many of them use it for extra credit, although some have used it in lieu of the traditional project or, ter or term paper. Some have even used it in lieu of a test or a final. Um, it is an opportunity to substitute a service learning uh, activity directly related to the curricula. So if you're in a web design class, you have to find somebody who needs help with a website. If you're in a French class, you have to find someone who needs French or needs translation. It is directly related to the subject matter. Of course, there are classes like Introduction to Sociology or Introduction to Human Services where you just have to find humans. Okay, so it depends on the, what the subject matter is, but that's the difference uh, between volunteering and service learning. As we're beginning to close the book on this season of Studio Bergen, we'd like to update you on how construction and renovations are progressing at the college's Meadowlands facility in Lyndhurst. The Meadowlands Library, Tutoring Center, and Financial Aid Offices have all now opened, bringing the facility a step closer toward the goal of one day becoming a full-scale branch campus. Director Ron Milan said students are excited and love the college's Southern Bergen outpost. They love it. They love the space. They love the newness of the, of the, the smell, the, the technology, um, and the staff. So they really like it a lot. They always say it's different from Paramus, I said, yes, it's newer, but um, they really like it a lot. They've embraced it. Final pieces of the facility, a conference center and science lab, will be available for use in the fall or early spring semester 2013. Milan expects all renovations to be completed at that time. Things are about to get real quiet at the college as we move into the summer months. Since Bergen does offer summer classes and registration for fall classes, the campus will be open Monday through Thursday, but closed on Fridays. So let's look at a few events that will take place this summer in an albeit sparse campus calendar. The 20th annual Young Playwrights Festival will take place Thursday, June 7th in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater. Bergen Stages will sponsor the event. And finally, fall 2012 classes begin Wednesday, September 5th, at the main campus in Paramus. Welcome to In Studio. Our guests this month represent half of the new executive board of the Student Government Association, President Margarita Valdez and Vice President Michelle Soto. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for Thank having you. us. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So let's start at the top. You guys are the, the two top positions on student government. Uh, why'd you run for executive office? 
Um, basically, before uh, responding to that question, I want to tell you a little about my background. I'm a student who came from Panama three years ago. I didn't know how to speak the language, so I got into an LLP program. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to just basically focus on learning the language. Last year, I decided to make a difference, and I decided to be the senator, the student government. By being the senator, I was promoted to be the chairwoman of the volunteer committee, and then I noticed that I didn't get to do all the stuff that I wanted. So before graduating, I wanted to make a huge difference, and I decided to run for this position. Um, I basically, I can tell you that I have the passion for what I'm doing because I love Bergen Community College. I've been growing up as a person, as a student, and even as a daughter. Like, things that I didn't even know before, I've been learning in here. Um, therefore, I decided to run for this position and help the student be the voice for them, mm. make a difference for them. That's great. It always feels good to win, too, when you run for something, right? <laughs> Nobody likes to lose. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes to lose, right. How about you, Michelle? Um, well, honestly, Six months ago, I didn't know what SGA was. I was very uninvolved in school, and I joined. I wanted to join a club, and I didn't want to join just any club. I wanted to join something I really was looking forward to doing. So my professor pushed me into doing student government, and I became a senator. And just seeing the the change we did, we got alumni trustee a vote. Mm -hmm. Just seeing that students, a group of students, thirty of us, can make such a huge change in a, an entire school, affecting seventeen thousand students, really pushed me into wanting to run for executive position and pushing my goals and my ideas into it and seeing what we could do next year. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, you think when you were running, you think that came through to the other students? I, do you think that's maybe why you were elected? Because as Margarita, as you said, you had a lot of passion. Do you think that came through? You think that's why you, you, you actually were elected? I think that the student, most of them saw me working really hard for the, a lot of food pantries that I have around the school. And they saw my passion for it. So basically, they saw that I was an honest person that had passion for them. And then also, I wanted to be for them, no matter what. So I, I think that's why I won. Hmm. Michelle, you think that, you know, again, it, it kind of resonated with the students? That... I definitely think the students I spoke to that said, I voted for you, and I voted for you. And I, before the whole voting process started, just in the beginning, while we were giving our debates and things, they really told me they really believed that I was really honest when it came to I really want to do things for students and really want to finish and accomplish a lot of things that benefits them and continue what we were doing. I really didn't want the next executive board to just kind of sit back and not do much. They set high standards for us, our last executive board, and I want to do better than they did and learn from their mistakes. So I honestly want to have the student voice out there and make it stronger. It's empowering to be voted in and chosen as opposed to just being appointed into a position, obviously. Um, you think that kind of gives you a little bit more juice, you know, that students actually decided to put you in office. You think that may makes a difference? Definitely, that makes a difference. We wouldn't be here if we stopped then. Um, we wouldn't nobody. We're definitely here representing more than 70,000 students. But basically, we're not just one, we're everybody. Um, the student, um, they're a family. We're not, as I mentioned before, I'm the president, but my e board, it will be the one who's going to be working with me to make sure that we're doing the right things for them. And the student government is going to, an organization that will be there for them. So no matter what, they come to us, that's going to be their second home. That other student here, they spend more time here, like me. Sometimes I don't even see my mom for two days. So there are more students like me around there, they need help. So that's why the student government is for them, and we're here for them because they select us. I think that makes a heck of a lot of sense. <laughs> and I mean, it's just like it works at a state or local or national level. Um, you know, you all have checks and balances, too. That there, as you said, there is an e-board um, that is a, the top representation, but you do have a Senate, too. And then you have the 17,000 other students, and uh, everybody has a voice. And I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, your influences, you know, who, who's, who are the people that were in your ear, you know, whether they're here at the college or um, maybe at home, uh, who are the people that, that kind of pushed you into doing this? Let's start with Michelle this time. There's a list. Yeah. <laughs> well, starting off with my family, there's points where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this because I was new to student government, so I felt I wasn't qualified enough for it. And I, everyone would be like, it doesn't matter as long as you want to do this and you really believe in what you want to do. 
but I always was second guessing myself. And I think it happens to any position where you're running for something. You don't know, you don't want to lose, so you kind of just want to get yourself out of it before you could lose, mm -hmm. you know. But my family pushed me, and they're like, "Just do it. You, if you lose, tough luck, you know. But if you win, it's gonna be amazing." And mm -hmm. I'm here, so it works. And specifically, my professor for history, Professor Schertz, mm -hmm. she pushed me for everything. She informed me about everything. She just wanted to push me to student government. So I, <coughs> I wrote her a huge email the other day, just thanking her for everything she's done. And I never thought a professor could really make that much of a difference in my life. Mm -hmm. And at first, you don't see it, but when you look back and you see all the things that I'm in and be, what I'm doing, comes a lot of things directly from her help. So she really pushed me. Hmm. Margarita, I know your mom is real important to you. Did uh, she have uh, any influence on you? She's my everything. Um, definitely, I wouldn't be here without her. She has been my support. And when I didn't even know how to speak the language, I wanted to go back to Panama. I didn't have friends, but she was there for me no matter what, supporting me, telling me that uh, I could give more than what I was given. Um, definitely, because of her, I'm here. And because of her, I want to improve and I want to be better. Also, I want to mention Dean Jennifer Reyes. Mm -hmm. um, she has been one of my best mentors. Uh, she always motivates me to do better, to move forward to the next step. So um, those two people have been helping me a lot through what I have been doing at Bergen Community College. I think that um, with, without them, I wouldn't be here. Mm. Uh, let's kind of talk about the business of, of being uh, the two top people on, on SGA. Um, what are your priorities for the next year? What are, what are you looking to do? Well, you mentioned before about the, the alumni voting rights. That was a huge uh, story from the last year. Um, what do you guys have in mind for, for next year? Well, right now we still need to meet with the whole e-board because, again, this, we, this is not a dictatorship or anything. Mm -hmm. There's democracy. So even though maybe we have the power to say something, we all like having our opinions and, and delegate certain things. But right now we have personal goals and we have overall goals as student government. And I think continue alumni trustee, yes, we got it, but it wasn't defined to how long we might have it. It might end, it might not, it depends on their decision. So obviously if it doesn't work out, we're gonna push for that because something we always wanna continue fighting for. But just really restoring the student voice and our autonomy as student government and getting power back to us, back to students. We are 17,000 students compared to how many people work here. We are a lot, we should mm -hmm. have just, a big, you know, decision and what things happen with the money we put in. We do put 72% 70, 70, of the tuition plus 4% of vending machines and things like that. So about 76, so three quarters of the money and budgeting that we get is directly from students. Mm -hmm. So just making sure that they remember that we should have a voice in every little thing that happens in, in school hmm. is really important. Margarita, anything to add? Well, I just want to say that the student government, basically, uh, their priority will be the students. No matter what, we'll be there for them. Mm -hmm. We're going to be working for them, nobody, nobody else. So um, we basically want to make sure that the student can they go to us without being afraid that they're going to get in trouble for anything because we're going to be there for help them. So basically, that's our priority. Believe it or not, guys. That's all the time we have. <laughs> but thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Maybe we'll talk to you guys again uh, down the road in our next season. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. That's the end of this episode and the end of our debut season of Studio Bergen. Thanks for inviting us into your homes and computer screens. It's truly been my pleasure. Thanks to everyone involved in the production of this show. Most importantly, the Office of Media Technologies. Without them, I'd have no lights, I'd have no footage, and I'd have no one to tape this program. So I wish them my most heartfelt thank you. But this isn't goodbye. It's just the summer. So enjoy the beach. <laughs> we'll be back for season two in just a few short months. I'll see you in September. Congrats to the class of 2012. Thanks and take care.